Hello everyone, welcome to MP. In this video tutorial series, I show you how to write books and technical reports in LaTeX. So, with no further delays, let's get started. In this video, I will show you some of the basics of LaTeX. If you have never used LaTeX before, or you are a new beginner, this is the video for you. The document you see here is what we will create in this tutorial video. In the last tutorial video, we installed MicTech and Tech Studio. Now we can start creating documents. To begin, we create a new file. Go to File and click on New. Now we can type in our code. Every document always starts with the command document class. This command has two parameters. In the first set of brackets, which are square brackets, you can, for now, just type in 12pt. The value in the square bracket sets the font size for your whole document. In the second set of brackets, which are curly brackets, you can just type in report, for now. The parameter in the curly brackets determines the type of document we want to create. Other options include book or article, but for now I just want report. Notice that commands in LaTeX always starts with a backslash. The next command we need to add is the begin command. In the curly brackets we need to define what we are beginning and right now we want to begin our document. Every begin command has to be accompanied by an end command after it. So here we need to have begin document and then end document and the content that will appear in our document will be in the middle. The begin command is the opening statement which begins the document environment and the end command is the closing statement which ends the document environment. Notice that the percent sign is used to comment out code in LaTeX. So these comments I typed after the percent signs will not be compiled with the rest of our code when the compiler builds our document. If we do not add the percent signs, we will get error messages because the compiler will not know what is going on. With that said, now I can add some content to my document. I'm going to keep it really simple and just type in, this is my first LaTeX document. We can also typeset characters from other languages, like Chinese for example, Jishu Wode Di Yige LaTeX Wendang. To have simplified Chinese characters in our document, we need to load a package such as XECJK. To typeset Chinese characters with the XECJK package, we will need to use a different compiler. The default compiler is usually PDF LaTeX. To switch to a different compiler in Tech Studio, go to Options and select Configure Tech Studio. Go to the Build tab and as the default compiler, choose XE LaTeX. For most cases, PDF LaTeX will do the same job as XE LaTeX. But one key difference is that XE LaTeX supports UTF-8 encoding robustly out of the box, whereas PDF LaTeX does not. UTF-8 supports the typesetting of many non-Latin scripts like Chinese. This is why the XE LaTeX compiler is recommended right now. There is a whole separate video focusing on languages later in this tutorial series. I will also talk some more about packages in a little while. Before we can compile our code, we just need to save the file. Go to save and choose a directory where you want your document to be created. I already created a folder where I will save everything for this tutorial series. I will just name the file report. When we do not add an extension after the name, Tech Studio will by default save it as a .tex file. But if we add an alternative extension like .bib for example, Tech Studio will save it as a .bib file. But for this file that we will be compiling, we want the extension to be .tex, so therefore we just don't add an extension. 
Now click save and see the file created in the designated folder. As you can see, the type is a LaTeX document, which is a TEX file. Now we can compile our code. To do so, we just simply click on build and view. This compiles the code and then displays the PDF file that is created. And in the folder where we saved our tech file that we just compiled, you will see that several files have been created. The only file that is important to us is the PDF, which will have the same name as the TEX file. Tech Studio has a built-in PDF viewer, which is how we are seeing the document now. But you can also open the PDF file with your default PDF viewer. So in our document, you can see that the English text is in one paragraph and the Chinese text is in the next paragraph. That's because we have an empty line between the two lines in our code. Something important is the naming of the two major code segments. The two major code segments are the preamble and the body. Everything before the begin document command is known as the preamble. In the preamble, you define parameters like text size, margin dimensions, color and so forth. The body of your code is the segment of code between the begin document and end document commands. Almost everything you type in the body will appear in your output document. Something else that is important is how to insert a percent sign into your document. Here I now have the sentence, this is how to insert a percent sign. If we compile it now, we will not get the desired result because the percent sign tells the compiler to neglect everything after it. So we will only get a part of the paragraph in our document. To get this line into our document as we see it in the code, we just simply add a backslash before the sign. This tells the compiler to insert the percent symbol into our document. This applies to other symbols that form part of commands as well. Just add a backslash in front of it and the compiler will insert that symbol into your document. The dollar sign is another example. Now let's talk a little bit about the dollar sign. By default, all the text you type which make out the bulk of your document is in what is called text mode. And then all your mathematical notation you want to have in what we call math mode. The dollar sign tells the compiler to put certain code into math mode. Everything between two dollar signs is placed in math mode. With this paragraph I just pasted, you will be able to see what I mean. Math mode lets LaTeX run some special instructions for the compiler, specifically for mathematical notation. If you forget to insert the dollar signs, you will just get an error message when compiling because the math commands are not recognized outside of math mode. If we add two dollar signs on each side of our math notation, it will be placed in its own centered paragraph in our document. I use both of these very frequently when I write a scientific document. Now notice that with every paragraph we have so far, the first line is being indented. There is a whole separate video about spacing later in this tutorial series. There are many math commands like times to make a multiplication sign and frac to make fractions. We can also make equations using the begin and end commands. Just insert begin equation with end equation following it to create the equation environment. It goes without saying that everything in the equation environment is automatically in math mode. The equation environment creates equations that are numbered. Additionally, we can also label equations with the label command. When an equation is labeled, you can refer to that equation in paragraphs using the ref command. As you can see, the number displayed next to your equation will also appear in your paragraph where you refer to that equation. 
If you have very long equations, they will run off the edge of the page. To split long equations into more manageable sizes that you can fit below one another on your page, you can use the mold line environment. Now, if we compile this command just like this, we will get an error message. That is because the mold line environment is not part of the standard LaTeX distribution. In order to get the compiler to recognize the mold line environment, we need to load the MathTools package in the preamble. To load packages, we use the command use package. The MathTools package contains several helpful commands and environments to typeset math notation, and the mold line environment is one of them. Now, with the MathTools package being loaded, we will no longer get any errors and everything will be compiled as expected. So now you can see that the mold line environment creates an equation that is evenly spaced over a number of lines, determined by the user. We can also create aligned equations using the align environment. In this case, I made it so that the equations are aligned at the equal sign. It also numbers each one of the equations. If we want the aligned equations without the numbering, we can just add a star at the end of a line to create an unnumbered align environment. I'm also going to load the Lipsum package, which will allow me to use the Lipsum command. The Lipsum command creates this lorem ipsum text. This is dummy text, which has no meaning, however, looks very similar to real text. The Lipsum command is very helpful for when you just want random text, so that you can examine the borders of your pages and the spacing of paragraphs. We can also add some figures into our document using the figure environment. We create the figure environment using the begin and end commands. I already prepared a picture located in our save folder. To get this picture in our document, we can use the include graphics command. The include graphics command can also have some parameters. The first parameter in square brackets is a dimension I will choose the width to be 100 millimeters. For the second parameter in curly brackets, we need to specify the directory of our picture. We can add some additional commands to the figure environment like centering, caption and label. The centering command centers the picture between the left and right margin of your page. The caption command captions the picture, and just like with equations, the label command labels the picture. Then with the figure now labeled, you can also refer to it anywhere in your document. We can also insert tables into our document with the table environment. And of course, we can also center, caption and label that table. For this table's code to be compiled successfully, we need to load the array and color TBL packages. Additionally, we can also create some chemical structures. For this, we will need to load the chemfig package. Then with that package, we can create a little organic molecule like this using the chemfig command. Now, of course, our documents would be very difficult to read without chapters, sections and subsections. So I will create some of those. We create chapters using the chapter command. In the curly brackets, you enter the name of the chapter. We can add as many chapters as we want throughout our document. Where our chapters will appear in our document is determined by where we put the chapter commands in our body. The same applies to sections and subsections. To get sections and subsections, we use the commands section and subsection respectively.
Finally, I will add a table of contents, a list of figures and a list of tables at the beginning of our document. For that, we just use the commands table of contents, list of figures and list of tables respectively at the beginning of our body. As you can see, the page numbers are displayed in those tables. Just be aware that sometimes you need to compile your code twice in order for your table of contents to update and be displayed correctly in your output document. So that's it for this tutorial. I provide all the code of this tutorial in a link in the description below. I know that our document so far is not the best looking document out there and that I skimmed through a lot of these things very quickly. But in later tutorials in this series, I dig deep into every aspect of everything I discussed here and even more. By the end of this series, you will be able to fine tune every aspect of every little detail exactly to your liking in your book or report. Thank you for watching and see you in the next tutorial.